When you said, let's go out on one engine, I was like, what? That sounds, sounds solid. really solid. Next tips for the boatyard. And I really only have myself to blame here. We definitely have something going on, our... The final step. Dinghy, dinghy. We're getting a new dinghy. All right, this could be kind of interesting. Oh, oh, This is the one reason we do YouTube, so that we can have friends who bring us goodies. I don't know, I have it in a long time. So, we brought you our Barnacle Buster. All right. Hey. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, look at this. The generosity. Thank, Thank you, you team. <laughs> You're awesome. Nice shorts. <laughs> I think we're in the final stretch of getting Clarity back together, which means it's time to clean, deep clean. And we have a lot of dirt and mildew from the boatyard and being out to sea. And I am excited to test out a new product that Chris told us about. So you gotta try X14. It really uh, gets out that mildew that you can't get out otherwise. Just spray it on. It works best if you spray it on in the sun, let it dry for five minutes and then hose it off. Okay, don't rub it, don't do anything. We definitely have some something going on on the helm seat. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this product a test. Part of this is just- Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what are you using my precious paper towels for? I promise to reuse it <laughs> five times. I know part of this is just dirt, so I'm gonna pre-wash it and I'm sure I'll get quite a bit off. The edge of the seat and the back of the seat had some really strong mildew stains that honestly I thought we would have to replace the seat covers. Nick, do you recognize this helm seat? Whoa! It looks like I replaced it. Wow. All right, friends, we're doing our prop service. I probably should have done this at the beginning of the haul out to make sure that the props were good. If I had to order any parts, but uh, well, we've got three more days here on the hard, so I'm doing it now. So my process is this, I take all the barnacles off, uh, all the little residue that I can with like a uh, screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. The next step is muriatic acid. You gotta be very careful with muriatic acid, not just uh, in terms of burning your body, but you have to be careful with it on metals. Do not get this stuff into any bearings, don't get it out to any steel, and especially not any stainless steel. Uh, for these bronze props, we're gonna mix the solution 50-50 with water, and we're not gonna leave it on here. Houston, we have a problem. And I really only have myself to blame here. We are scheduled to drop back into the water in two and a half days on Tuesday morning. And one of the last things that I usually do before we go back in the water is I lube the props. I squirt grease into these little grease holes and I clean the props really well. And I really should have done this a day after we hauled out of the water. And here's why. I tested what I thought was all three blades on both props. And today I grabbed one of the blades on the other side and I got too much play. I'm yanking this thing back and forth and there's too much play in these props. So I took the propeller blades off of the hubs and I inspected all the bearings. And thankfully we just had one bad bearing. But you can see the corrosion on the roller bearings. They're not turning as freely as they should. And then the cage is not retaining the bearings the way they should. So these bearings should not be able to pop out like that one is. 
So we really just have one bad bearing, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of them. I love these Brenton H5 auto props. Uh, they're feathering and they're variable pitch, so they're tuned for our horsepower and our Continue RPMs. But they are from England. And like a lot of somewhat exotic boat parts, they're expensive. The parts for them are also very expensive. I looked at the price for the kits and I just about had a heart attack. Each bearing kit for these props from Brunton, the bearing kit costs $590 and change, almost $600 plus shipping for a bearing replacement kit. But what are you gonna do? You need the bearings. Oh, I got all the specs on the bearings from the manufacturer and I'm ordering just the part that failed, the roller bearing part of the assembly. So I'm not going to pay for all the things the that I don't need. And the cost savings is huge. Even with the overnight shipping, we're talking about $250 compared with over $1,200 plus shipping. So Miller Bearing, thank you for saving me some money. Talk about before and after pictures. That's the new hardware. There's a new bearing and it spins free. If the manufacturer says the full keel needs to be supported, insist that that happen. Insist on it. Avoid this. But I, I cut this out, all the damaged area. Then I feathered it a minimum of 10 to one. Line one layer, inject epoxy See, straight. You know, you really have to want to do this. Yeah. Okay, I so love, now you take I I've always wanted to do origami, and to do it with palm fronds and not have to go find the paper. I mean, this is brilliant. This it's is right cool. up my alley. And remember, it's only coconut. Coconuts. Coconut trees, palm, coconut palm fronds are the only ones. The simplest place to make the knot is this way, around this one. Mm, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna geek out a little bit on paint, which is not a super interesting topic, but it's really, really important when it comes to underwater paint. So this right here is a sail drive. And a sail drive is made out of aluminum, and the bottom paint that we use for the bottom of Clarity is somewhat standard stuff. It's Micron CSC, and it uses copper to inhibit biological growth. Here's the problem. Aluminum and copper together in seawater is a bad deal. The, uh, the differing metals close to each other will eat away at the aluminum. So you can't have paint with copper in it on an aluminum sail drive. There's a couple different options, but I'm just gonna tell you what we do. Uh, we use the copper bottom paint, but then instead of putting bottom paint on our sail drives per se, I use an epoxy paint called Interprotect 2000E. This is a two-part paint. You mix it together and it kicks off and forms a really, really hard surface. I paint this onto the sail drives. I don't put any bottom paint on the sail drives themselves. Uh, there are special paints you can buy that don't have any copper in them that are safe for the sail drives, but they're really, really expensive. And from what I've seen, they don't work all that great. The other reason I don't put any bottom paint on the sail drives is that I am down here underwater all the time in the tropics. I'm inspecting the bottom, I'm cleaning the bottom, and I'm inspecting the props. So it's really easy for me each time I do that to knock off any barnacles or anything that have grown on the sail drives. But remember, never use copper paint on aluminum sail drives. It'll eat holes in it. This really is one of the last things we do before we drop in the water. So fingers crossed we're gonna get everything done, wash the boat down, fill the water tanks, and tomorrow we splash. A dinghy, we're getting a new dinghy. A dinghy right, right now. Since they're not, they're not giving us much of a deal on this year old dinghy, this is last year's model. So what I think we need to do is every time the dinghy appears in a shot, we have to fuzz over the name, you know, blur it out like they do. Oh, we've got the best dinghy ever. Beep! Dinghies make the best tenders ever.
You look good in your yeah. new dinghy. Yeah, from from. So after much debate, we decided to go with the high field. And the main thing, the main criteria that we were looking for was an aluminum bottom. We looked at AB and they were another thousand dollars more. This is actually the 2019 model. And I think it's really cool because there's a separate anchor locker and then there's a separate fuel tank locker. So we don't have to have the fuel back behind us. We've got lots of room for snorkel gear and it's we can have four other people in here. So this is our hot rod as far as I'm concerned for the Clarity Expeditions. So 30 horsepower, we can go anywhere. What do you think? Pass me my drink. <laughs> No, 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 the one with the umbrella. But probably the thing that really jumped out at me, the difference between the high field dinghy and the other aluminum bottom dinghies that we looked at, the Czar, which was very nice, and also the AB, is the reinforcement across the transom. And on the high field, there's two really beefy uh, supports for that transom. We've got a big engine, we've got a 30 horsepower, so this is nice and strong. And uh, this is the 380 model. We probably could have gotten by with the 360, but well, they had this one in stock and there was a little discount because it's last year's model. Still, stay with me, Megan. $6,000. Wow. We have never spent so much money on a dinghy. Our last car was 5,000. <laughs> but this is our car, so it's worth it. And not five handholds or six handholds, 12 handholds. And that is really important when you're scuba diving or snorkeling, getting in and out of the boat. So much easier with lots and lots of handholds. How about that? We're floating again. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. So I gotta say, I was sweating. I was sweating for the last couple days, worried about backing out of that super duper tight slip, the haul out slip, with our brand spanking new wrap. Unblemished, perfect. I don't wanna put the first scratch in it. Getting out of the slip turned out to be not much drama. The drama came before that. I've got a pre-splash checklist. Things I go through to make sure the boat is ready to go back into the water. One of those things is turning on the ignitions to make sure that there's battery power so that the engines will start. But because we're out of the water, I can't actually start the engines to test them out. You gotta lower the boat down into the water to uh, start them up. So, they lower us down into the water. And everybody's standing around. We got quite an audience. The starboard engine fires right up and the port engine just clicks. It wouldn't start. Our angel, Chris, who was helping, well, he wasn't helping, he fixed the port keel. Uh, Chris, we became friends. Chris and Giza are great people and uh, Chris is standing there and he jumped right into action. Uh, I gave the starter and the solenoid a couple taps he got in, did pretty much the same thing, but Chris started disassembling things. I think the issue 
is we had a disconnected wire. This happened one time before. I can't remember exactly where, but I had been fiddling around on the engine and I just pulled a little tab off and uh, disconnected something and it wouldn't start. Chris found that same tab, reconnected it, and we were all good. And now, we are floating. It feels so good to be back floating, be able to do the dishes, to be away from all the debris in the yard, and to finally clean up the boat. And we actually have uh, a lot of pressure because my mom arrives in about six hours. <laughs> oh my God. So we got to put her cabin together and whew, another stretch of go, 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 and edit this video and get it out on time. So no laying around for the O'Kellys right now. 